Okay, this is our 2003 Hummer H1. I'm just going to kind of walk you through what we have customized on this vehicle. The tires probably have less than 3,000 miles on them. And they're a Toyo Open Country MT, 40 inch, 1550 wide. Let's see, like it's almost brand new. Wheels are the XDs, 22 inch. We uh, got this vehicle from Phoenix. I believe it was a one owner. The guy kept it in the garage a lot. Uh, we put uh, smoked out the lights on the first thing we did and we put actual HID conversions in it so it does have high intensity discharge headlights, high and low beams. New wiper blades which don't amount to a whole lot. All the lettering and stickers on the Hummer come off. They can't be removed anytime. The fender flares are riveted on from a company I believe called Predator or Adventure Outdoor maybe. I think it's out of St. Louis. That sticker was already on it when we got it. Just kind of left it kind of different. The, uh, the armoring at the bottom was already on it but it had kind of a bulk tube on it and it was a dull black. So we uh, took that and cut that tube off and filled the holes and sanded it, painted it, kind of protect the body a little bit, looks a little different, cleans the bottom of it up some. The fender flares are all in good shape except for this one did have a crack in it during shipping, which it still does. The paint is in really good shape on most all the vehicle, except for that spot I showed you in the fender. Let's see if you can see right here, the clear coat looks like it's getting thin on this corner of the hood. Um, too. Getting a little clear, but the rest of it's in, in really good shape. Uh, the brush guard on the front came around and extended on, and we had to cut that off to make the flares work and cap them. So it's got a little bit of a different look than a standard brush guard, but nothing too too crazy. The uh, the winch on the front is a hydraulic winch. We do have the controller for it. Uh, inside pouch. Floor mats are Husky liners that are black. We do not have them in the vehicle. We put new carpet in. Um, if you can tell, but it's it's brand new carpet, so it should have almost no stains. Uh, inside the vehicle, we did away with the boring old gauges that were in it. The only original gauge we got is this in the center here. It takes the mileage, which is 39,511 miles. And you got your turn signals in the center. And then over here, you have the fuel gauge. Other than that, edge was great enough to help us out with some touch screen monitors. Got the miles per hour, the engine temp, and the RPMs on this side. Exhaust temp, oil pressure, and the air temperature on the other. We've got voltage down at the bottom. Barometric pressure, which I don't know how accurate that is. But load on the engine which it's not running so it's showing 100. Uh, that is not a chip, they're just gauges. Um, the uh, touchscreen part does work. You can customize the backgrounds on them. Um, you know, you go on to Edge's website, there's a lot of, a lot of neat stuff you can do with them, but we just kind of left it uh, j just pretty normal. There was quite a bit of tying into the system to do. The computer on this vehicle is not give you a lot of information to go off, so a lot of it had to be done with their EAS system. I'll go ahead and start the vehicle so we can see the RPMs turn alive there. Oil pressure. Pyro on this vehicle driving down the road, full bore, never seen it get over 1100 degrees. I mean, really trying to work it. And it does have an on onboard air locker system with it. I'm not real familiar with it. It was on the vehicle when we got it. Um, that is a switch for the KC lights in the front that do work. The rest of the gauges here. 
steering wheel. Got kind of a little electric horn. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Okay. Um, so that's that's pretty much it with the gauges. Both touch screens. Pretty uh, pretty cool dudes going down the highway. Said so you can change the background pictures to be whatever you want. You can take a photo of your dog and put it on the background if you'd like to. I thought it was kind of cool. On the radio part, we put an iPad in the radio here. So put that to work. Here's the volume knob. This here unit here opens it up, so if you want to take the iPad out, you can update it, plug it back in the dock. On the iPad, you can do iTunes, Pandora, search your internet, you can do Google Maps. Any, any of the regular stuff, the iPad, it all works. It does do video mirroring too, so if you have a video to push play, it'll show against the rest of the screens, which we'll show you later. Um, we just hooked up a hot spot on the top, got a charger coming out top of the dash for it, um, easy in and out, and that way you're not tied to just this vehicle for having internet at all, all works. The mic for the Bluetooth, and then on the CD player we relocated it in the center, and really all it does is, is act as a mirror, um, it does have a USB, so if you want to hook up a flash drive or something like that for music you can. This is a JVC. Uh, well, ABX 77, I believe, something like that. That uh, sound quality unit, very good. Uh, don't really use a CD player much when you got the iPad, no reason to. But, but all that does still work if you desire. Switches here. This is your switch for uh, the rear TVs, which we'll show you here in a second. And this is your heated seats, high and low. We put them in. It does have heated seats front and rear. Your rear switch will be right there for the, the rear person to grab a hold of. I'll turn the radiation back off there. Uh, we did put the leather seats in it. It did have cloth when we got it. They are two-tone gray and charcoal. And on the audio part of it, we put quite a bit in here. On the top you can see we got JLC5 components here. And you go to the outsides, front and rear, and they're uh, JL five and a quarter ZRs, and which is their their higher end speaker. Works really nice. Come to the back. Got me a little chamois there. I didn't get it. Got this umbilical cord that comes with it. So if you're ever showing this vehicle, we got the charger plug right here in the wheel well. So from that point, you can plug this adapter in and put on any kind of battery charger or whatnot so you don't run your batteries dead. This is a center console we made. It has a 15-inch W3 down firing onto the floor. Helps get some good mid bass. And we also have two 8-inch ZR woofers. Uh, it does real well with a lot of mid bass. And kind of custom did the, the console here. And this overhead piece was busted when we got the vehicle. And we looked at the get another one, and we couldn't find one very reasonable. So we came up with the idea just to kind of make one. And it looks really sharp, had a lot of compliments on it. Um, ZR components in the rear as well. HID, uh, or not, excuse me, uh, LED lighting on the interior. All, all three sets are set up front. There's another set here in the back. Okay, when we come in, we've got three JLXD amps. There's a 600 that runs the 15. There's a 606 that runs the vocals in the in the rear and the uh, C5s in the center. And here's a 404 that runs the uh, the 8 inch subs, the 8 inch ZR subs. Now let's move to the back. It does have an exhaust that was already on it. Not real familiar with it, but it does sound really throaty. See if we can read the name there for you. Um, we did not have anything to do with that, but. It does have a good sound to it, good throat. So there again, all the stickers do come off. Get that big monster tire out of the way. And when you open her up for a tailgating party, here's what you got in the rear. Give you kind of a good overlook of the whole thing. Oh, I was closing my door there. 
what we have here is two XD amps, three, excuse me, three XD amps. A 604 running the ZR in the fronts. And a 900, or excuse me, a 1201 running each 12, 13 and a half W7. And we also have the marine tower speakers here if you open up these side windows. Can, uh, can blare out the window there and really annoy all your neighbors or, or if you're at a show or tailgate or party or something like that it really puts out a lot of sound. These TVs were just kind of something to add to the back side of the console. They're seven inch screens. There's five of them. Um, they just mirror whatever's up front. You can play a movie out of that DVD player and still have the iPad playing music out and play movies in the center here and have it playing. You can have audio playing through all the speakers. I mean, you got a lot of selection on how you're going to run that head unit versus that iPad. Uh, spend a lot of time trying to integrate that as nicely as possible. Here's the other side of the marine speakers. Um, the volume in this, this vehicle is unbelievably loud and clear. Um, as much as much volume as you want. There are two extra batteries back here in the rear. Um, they're an extremely large battery. I believe they're an Enterprise, but they are basically a train battery. So their their battery storage is phenomenal. You can you can run this thing for hours and not have a whole lot of voltage issue. Locking gas caps both work. They were on the vehicle when we retrieved it. And let's go look in the hood. This front piece folded down. I can open this up with one hand. Oh yeah. Well, we didn't do anything real special. The onboard compressor is still here. Um, all still works. That the tire pressure inflation system on it was functional when we got it. Obviously, with these tires, um, we disconnected it, but it can be made functional again. Um, but everything in the engine compartment does look clean. We've had it parked inside for one time as much as four or five months. There's no leakage on the floor anywhere. Um, no fluid loss that we know of. I have not drove the vehicle a lot. I believe it had 36 or 37,000 miles on it when we got it, and it's got 38, 39 now. So we haven't driven a whole lot, but we've, we've went to a lot of shows and, and things like that with it. Um, so I think that is pretty much our, our skinny on the H1 Hummer. Have any questions about it? Let's get a hold of us. Thanks.